Hey everybody, Seven here, and I'm here in Medieval Dynasty. Now, I bought this game immediately the second I saw Nerdlet Gaming drop her very first video on it. The way that the story is laid out, the world is laid out, and everything in this game is absolutely beautiful, and it's unlike anything that I'd ever played before. It mixes in elements of action RPG, as well as city builder and planning, which are things that I had never seen before mixed in a game like this. Now, the reason I'm making this video is, with the introduction of the console versions, I'm seeing a lot of comments on Steam and on Reddit where people aren't understanding what certain icons mean, how to get rid of them, if they're beneficial or if they're detrimental, and I'm going to run through a bunch of them and to show how to get rid of them and why they're there. As you can see, I already have two icons at the top. I have the hammer and anvil icon, as well as the money bag icon. So I guess I'll go right into those ones first. The hammer and anvil icon means that you have two items that are not being produced right now. So you can see that it's fluctuating between two to three to four. That's because I have materials that are incoming and being used immediately afterwards to create some item. So if we go to the management tab, we can actually go over to the production side. And this is generally where you'll see most of the issues. I don't have any here though. Farming has two issues though. So you see that I'm not producing oat grain because I don't have enough oat. You'll see that I'm also not producing fertilizer because I do not have enough manure. These will actually independently post one of those icons. So the icon for the hammer and anvil will show two. You can see on this side, this one recognizes enough manure to be producing fertilizer, but it does not have enough oat grain. So total, this is counting for three. You'll also see that this one does not have an employee here. This is not going to actually cause a hammer and anvil icon to display. The reason for this is I have the buckets of water turned off. If I turn this on, it will say no worker and we'll actually get an increased value on the hammer and uh, anvil. Now the bag icon refers to the vendors. So that means that six items are not being able to be sold from the vendors. And as you can see, I have a lengthy supply of the vendors already. The yellow ones here are referring to the food vendors. These orangish brown ones are general bulk good and resource vendors. The red ones are tool and weapon vendors. And the blue one are clothing vendors. So if we look at the vendors tab, we'll be able to see what items I have listed for sale that I don't actually have the resources to be selling. So here under the services tab, you'll see the entire list of all of the vendors that I have. This one has an issue with the red icon, so let's go see what I have missing from this vendor. Here we see that I don't have wheat bread. So if I were to get the resources to produce this manually and then walk over to my kitchen, this icon will go away. I'm also running out of meat pies. And that seems to be that for this one. So even though this is only one particular vendor, given that it has two items that it is currently running out of, it will have listed two under the bag. So it will cumulatively count all of the items that I'm not selling. Here, this vendor is out of fish tarts and meat pies. So that's adding two more to that counter. This is out of wheat bread and meat pie. So that's adding two more to the counter overall. So here I am at my resource storage, and I'm going to start removing items out of resource to show what some of the more basic triggers mean. So I've turned off my wood shed, so there is no logs being chopped, no planks being made, no any of that. I've also removed all the sticks, all the logs, and all the planks out of my storage chest. Now, as you can see, we're very quickly going to have a cascade of the far left icon where there's the chopped wood. That's referring to firewood. However, it's not referring exclusively to the firewood itself. If you run out of firewood, the game will actually preferentially go through other wood items, firewood being first, then using sticks, then using logs, and then using planks. Your townsfolk will actually use these to heat their houses. Now, the higher you have your insulation, obviously the lower your wood consumption is, and you can even remove these 
from their ability to be used. So if you want to save your logs in the event of accidentally somehow running out of firewood, you can deselect this and they will use firewood until all the firewood is run out. They will then start burning sticks until all the sticks run out. They will skip the logs and then go down to planks. Generally, it's good to just use all of them at once anyway and try to find more staff or more woodsheds so that you can supplement your intake instead of having to restrict what they can and cannot use. Now you'll see the number is going to continuously grow because it will be a bit of a backlog as some of these houses have already a bit of a buffer of what kind of wood they already have to begin with. So you'll see as they use whatever unit they had pulled out of storage, this will continue to grow. So as you see here, my population is currently 92. So it will continue to increase until we reach 92. Now, if you look, you can see the individuals with the status have that icon on them. If you click on it, it says their status is no wood. So this family has no firewood to burn for their house. Just like with the vendors, each individual will count towards that icon. So even though this is one house that has no firewood for it, it is giving me the icon of having two individuals do not have firewood. Now, this person lives alone. So this icon of having no firewood is only affecting just themselves. Thankfully, it's the middle of summer, so nobody's going to be getting too angry with me. However, you will see there is a slight down arrow on this individual with no firewood. Also over here, also over here. So if they do not have a resource to survive, food, water, and wood being the base essentials, their mood will continue to decrease until hitting negative 100%, at which point they will leave your town. So let's put all this firewood back so that nobody thinks that we're running out of firewood. I'm now over here at my food storage to show you what another icon means, and it's more one of the more basic ones. So I mentioned that the three basics of the townsfolk needs are food, water, and wood. The food storage is going to have all of the food and all of the drinks. So here we can see if I remove all of the buckets of water, here we see that the water droplet icon next to the little person is starting to fill in. So currently we have three townsfolk that do not have enough water in their reserves. The thing to note is this actually takes a little bit of time because every house drew an invisible unknown amount of water out of the food storage shed. Any production buildings that you have that are also using buckets of water will have also pulled their water first. So I had to wait for the production buildings to kick in so that they removed the reserve water and started making what they could before registering that they did not have water. Now you'll also notice that the hammer and anvil is starting to increase quite dramatically as well. This is because I have a multitude of taverns right now and I have two kitchens. So we're currently at 11 items that we cannot make. So here if we go to the production tab, we can see that the kitchen, both kitchens have issues, and two of my taverns have issues as well. If we go into the kitchen, we'll find that we are currently not making flatbread because we don't have enough water. And you notice that we are still making all these other versions of bread, which do require buckets of water. These are because they have their own hidden reserves that you wouldn't be able to find if you ran over to the individual chest and you won't find in the food storage chest either. They're just sort of in limbo that a worker at some point pulled out of the food storage chest and is now in some sort of working memory that they're able to use. So if we continue to wait, we'll see that these invisible reserve buckets of water will continue to be used and that the production number will continue to increase as the workers realize that there is no water to be making more and more items and as the reserve water goes down you'll also notice that the number of townsfolk without water will also start skyrocketing so you can now see that we are up to 25 townsfolk that do not have any water for their houses and it's growing exponentially. When you run out of a certain linchpin item, you can oftentimes see a complete cascade, especially if you have multiple production buildings using the same item, or if you have a large town that is going through a large quantity of water or firewood, you can see that once the snowball starts, it actually can cascade pretty quickly. 
So looking back at the production buildings, we see that we have our kitchens are still an issue and we have three taverns now that are all having issues regarding the resources. You go over here, this tavern is making four different types of beer, all of which require buckets of water. This one is making four different types of beer, but it still has water enough in reserve to make three out of the four types that they normally make. This one has consumed all of its water, so it is flagged that it has four items that it cannot make due to lack of water. So all total with all of these issues, this is why we're seeing 16, 17 bouncing back and forth on the production side. All we have to do is return the water back in. So with all of that returned, you can not only see that the townsfolk missing water icon has been completely eliminated, but the number of production items that cannot be produced has tr shrunk dramatically. Now, another important thing to note is that just with the wood items, there are certain things that you can restrict your townsfolk from using. So let's say you wanted them to use exclusively firewood and not be burning sticks. You could shut off the sticks and they would burn firewood first, log, then plank. The same is true for all of the water items. Now here, because I was using this as a money-making uh, venture instead of an actual water venture, I had left on the buckets of water for them to drink, but shut off a lot of the things that I was wanting to sell at vendor stalls. Down towards the bottom, you can see that fruit is actually listed as water items. This is because the pears, apples, plums, etc. not only have a food denomination, but also have a water denomination as well. So if you click this off on the food tab, but leave it on on the water tab, your townsfolk will actually continue to eat these items and chew into your resource amounts if you do not have enough water to sustain them. So in order to save your fruits for things like fruit pies or for wines or juices or etc., you're going to need to shut this off not only in the water demand, but also in the food demand. Another thing of note is that obviously the juices themselves are usable as a water source. So if you're trying to use taverns to turn juices into wines, your townsfolk will drink the juices if they are available and if they are not a preferentially selected item. So your townsfolk will continue to drink these, causing you to potentially run out of them before your workers at the tavern are able to turn them into wines. So these are important inventory management things that can affect your baseline needs of food, water, and wood. Thankfully, you can see that the bucket of water is actually listed as priority one. So this means that if you have someone working a well, or if you yourself are running buckets to the well to constantly keep yourself in supply of buckets of water, they will preferentially select this before getting into your beers and wines and more expensive items to drink for their water consumption needs. So now I have removed all food items out of the food storage that I have given my townsfolk access to be eating. So shortly, we should be starting to see the icon pop up for townsfolk being out of food. So there we see the icon of the apple and little drumstick thing next to the person. This is indicating that two people are now without food. The longer this goes on, just like with all the other icons, this will continue to cascade and increase exponentially until all townsfolk are without a food. So less than a minute in, we see that we're already at seven individuals. Now, the thing to note is, this chest is full of food. Just like with the wood and water items, there are items that you can restrict your townsfolk not to have. Only here, the list of priorities is a bit different. You'll notice that cherry pie is the A number one item that your townsfolk will preferentially select to eat. This could be a problem if this is an item that you're trying to generate either through workers or through your own production as an item that you're trying to make money off of by either selling at your food vendor stall or by trying to bring with you to various towns to sell yourself. So this might be an item that would be important to you to deselect. As you can see, there's a number of items that I've deselected as these are items that I'm more interested in selling rather than having my townsfolk eat them themselves. So while we're at seven here, all we need to do is go into the food demand control tab Go over to the pear tarts that I have plenty of, 
select it to be accessible, and here we see 2,465 units, while we need 1,751 per day. By deselecting, or by actually selecting this one, we can see that our food demand immediately goes away. But this will then cause them to immediately start eating that item. Now, obviously this playthrough is extreme late game, and you're not likely going to see these icons pop up quite in such a manner. What's most likely to happen is that a new player is going to have a certain interaction that's going to immediately cause multiple of these icons to pop up right off the bat. Let's go look at that. So what's most likely going to happen is you're going to be just starting out building houses, building some barns, maybe some farm fields, getting yourself established with just incoming wood, incoming food, and incoming water. So you're going to need help for that, and you're going to need to talk to the individuals that are sitting around the campfire here, which are the recruitable individuals that you can hire for your town. Let's go up to one of these guys. How is life treating you? And you select the fourth option, I'm looking for good people willing to join me. He says, sounds great. See you there. Immediately what pops up is food icon one, water icon one, wood icon one, and also the housing icon of one. So what we do now is we go to the management tab. We go over to find our individual who is met lacking everything. Here's our guy, and you can see that he now has icons for every basic resource that a townsfolk needs. The house, the food, the water, and the wood. So if we click on him, I do have a few houses that only have one individual in them. Maybe I can find a place for him to live. So here we see two suitable houses for him to live in. And it's important to note that if a house already has full family, or if a house already has an actual married couple, even if there is a third or fourth bedroom in that house, that you cannot put another person in that house. Another thing to note is that you cannot put two males together or two females together. So here we see that he has a house assigned to him, so the house icon was immediately removed, and there is a few second lag time between getting the food, water, and firewood icons removed. And there we go. Our new resident is happily walking to his house that he was assigned to. However, he will still get upset with us because he does not have a job right now. But even though this individual does not have a job, that is not an icon that will show up in the upper left-hand corner as it's deemed that that's not a critical responsibility that we have to address, such as having enough materials for our production people or having enough materials for our vendors to actually sell. So with that, that's all of the top left icons that will be displayed for us. But there are a number of other icons that can show up down with the stamina, health, food, and water bars down at the lower left-hand corner. Let's go investigate some of those now. Okay, so I just popped off to the local herbalist shop. So now we can start exploring the smaller icons in the bottom left-hand corner. Now you'll notice as we go through these, there is a lot more icons that are going to pop up in the left, as these are individually based versus the upper left-hand corner ones, which are town-based. The very first thing that you'll come across likely is this one. That old cartoonish dumbbell-looking thing. That is your overweight capacity. So if you look here, I have upgrades that are allowing me to carry 80 kilograms. Now, as this number increases on the left, you'll find yourself getting closer and closer to your max weight, which will then cause you to not be able to run as fast. Once it turns red, you'll be at such a maximum weight that you'll be incapable of moving at all. Now here we see that the number is in yellow, which means that I am capable of moving, but I will not be able to move as fast as I would normally if I was not encumbered at all. Now, the interesting thing about the encumbrance has been updated. It used to actually read that once you were encumbered, you were unable to run at all. So by pressing L3, or left stick, you would be able to sprint, using your stamina to make you go faster. The current way that this is, is that it's more of a quantitative item instead of a qualitative one, where you can now continue to sprint, but it will be at a reduced rate at an increasing amount of your overweight capacity. 
to pick this back up, you see that the dial increases clockwise, and now I move much slower. So while I am still able to sprint, the sprint speed and the walking speed is much slower than it was had I been unencumbered. This is a big improvement because it used to be the fact that if you had even one single tenth of a kilogram over your max carry weight, you were unable to sprint at all. So let's get into the second icon you'll likely encounter, as this icon will actually show up as a prerequisite for part of the quest line that you will be forced to go in through during the opening of the game. So here I have a few ones, and if you remember, the opening quest line has Unigost requiring you to go to the bartender to get a few beers in order for him to start telling you some stories. As you may notice at the end of the stories, you have an icon that appears at the lower left-hand corner. So here we have this yellow beer bottle sign, which indicates your intoxication level. Aside from just aesthetics, this actually has some post-processing effects which will blur your vision and make it very difficult to navigate. On top of this, if you go into third person, you'll see that your character is increasingly difficult to control, and you can actually fall down at times. This is also a quantitative process where having one or two beers might not be so terrible, but as I've just drank three wines, my character is now completely sloshed. This will slowly fade over time, and you will eventually recover. There are potions that you can drink, as well as uh, certain flowers and remedies to eat, that will reduce your intoxication level on their own. The next topic I'm going to be covering is the poisoning. Now here I have a bitter bullet mushroom, but an easier way and a more likely way that you're going to first encounter poisoning is by eating food that is not in the proper condition. Now the condition here is listed as 100% for my clothing, 84% for my axe, and 100% for all these various other potions that I have. But if you've gone to the food storage, you'll notice that the food itself also has conditions. Here you'll see that this apple is at 50% condition. This means that it, even though it is in the food storage locker, it is continuing to deteriorate just much slower than it would be if it be just lying on the ground. Now since this 50% is still listed in white, this means that this apple is still safe for consumption. As this condition continues to drop down, it will actually turn red and will have a slight poison percentage listed right next to the plus three food and plus two water. However, for this instance, I'm just going to be using the mushroom just to show what the icon is and then explain what the poisoning actually does. But here we see that our poisoning is at 50% as listed by the purple bar that is second above the intoxication bar. What this does is, while poisoned, you cannot increase your food by, by eating more items. So if you've eaten something bad and you're at a particularly low food bar, that being the orange one, you will not actually be able to increase that bar while you were poisoned. Poisoning can be removed by a number of different flowers and herbs and can also be removed by drinking intoxicating beverages. The next icon that we're going to be covering is the potion of camouflage. Now this is a unique one in that it temporarily removes animal hostility. So let's take a look at what that icon looks like. Here we see a green icon with a wolf and a shield, that meaning that we are no longer being targeted by hostile animals. This why isn't here is a blatantly hostile animal, and as I fight, and as I approach, oh shit, that didn't work at all. Holy shit, I never actually tested this. Well, this is a good one to uh, actually do your homework before you actually start talking about this kind of stuff. Because that is not supposed to happen! Well, camouflage didn't do squat, actually. Oh, hey, but this brings us to our third icon. Another one that you would experience very early in the game that I completely forgot about. That's the dirt icon. This has a number of different... In uh, uh, hang on a sec, I'm kind of a little busy right now. The dirt icon has a number of implications. Uh, not the least of which would be if you're trying to flirt with someone, they will spurn you and reject you. 
uh, if you walk up to your wife, she'll say that you're filthy and that she'll actually offer to take your clothes off and wash them for you, thus removing all of your dirt off of your icon. Okay, are we, are we safe here now? Whoa, that didn't work at all. Anyway. The dirt icon is another quantifiable one, as you can see that the dial is to the lower right there. It will actually increase as you perform actions. It increases quickly when you do farming actions, as this is a just a simply dirtier task. If it reaches maximum, certain NPCs and vendors will not actually talk to you at all and will insist that you come back when you're cleaned off better. There are a number of ways to remove this icon, one being to simply just get wet in a normal river. The other is to craft a wash tub and take a several buckets worth of water and dump them inside, thus allowing you to take unlimited baths within this wash tub. The water within the wash tub will never go away. As you can see, now that I'm clean, I am now able to commence with business and interaction with other human beings. The next icon that we're going to be talking about is the Potion of Night Vision. This gives a post-processing effect on the field of vision to increase your ability to detect things at night without using the Hunter Sense or the Scavenger Sense. Let's check that out. Here you see the blue icon with the eye above it, and you can see that there's a post-processing effect of adjusting the gamma on the viewer's perspective to make it far easier to see high contrast and low light visibility. This is another timed quantifiable status effect and quickly goes down over time. The next icon I'm going to be talking about is the Potion of Satiety. Now, what this status does it is it decreases your food consumption by half so that while you're off far from home doing adventures or fighting bandits or hunting or etc you'll be using less of your food bar which you see here is at 82.1 of 100 that will just go down half as fast as it normally would and here you see the same drumstick icon that they use for the townsfolk being out of food only here it's with a point up instead of being without. And you can see that as all of these are, it is a timed buff that will continue to tick down until it is removed. The next icon that I'm going to be talking about is given by the Potion of Saturation. This is identical to the Potion of Satiety in that it simply does 50% less water consumption. So with the Satiety and the water consumption being reduced, you would be free to be an extended distance away from home without a water skin and without having to pack any food for your being away for an extended period of time. The next icon that I'm going to be talking about is given by the Potion of Stamina. Just like with the food and water consumption reduction, this one uses 50% stamina. This icon is displayed with the two arrows in a green circle, and it simply just uses less stamina per sprinting. As you can see here, I am in a full sprint and my stamina bar is reducing negligibly as I'm running away. This is also true for if you're using melee weapons in combat and you can punch or swing relentlessly with negligible loss to stamina. The next icon that I'm going to be discussing is given by the Potion of Strength. Now this one is an interesting one as it only affects melee damage. While it does say 50% more damage on it, I have done my own testing and found that bows and crossbows do not have any effect under the effects of this potion. Here we see a sword with an up arrow icon surrounded by a white ring. This is to indicate that our melee damage is increased when we fight with blunt weapons such as the cudgels and with fists. This would also increase our damage with knives as well. Now the next icon that I'm going to be talking about is from the Potion of Temperature. 
Now, most players are probably not going to actually ever see or need this uh, icon, as they'll quickly realize that the first winter is very cold and will likely find themselves seeking out the help of a tailor to purchase clothing that will help insure themselves against the elements. You can also use it your own tailoring bench to make your own crafting once you unlock the appropriate recipes of various cold weather gear. However, the temperature retellant given by this potion applies both directly to the summer temperatures and the winter temperatures as well. So here we have a green ringed icon indicating that we now have increased thermal resistance. You can note this by seeing that where the 24C over there is, now here we see that the size of the green section of the temperature gauge has been increased. The red and the blue have been narrowed, and anything in the red section will have increased water consumption. Anything in the blue section will have increased food consumption. If a player is far too deep into the red section or the blue section, the player can take health damage over time. The next icon that I'm going to talk about is given by the potion of weight. This is a simple, straightforward one where all it does is increase the weight limit that you have. Now, the weight limit is automatically increased through a number of skills. It can also be increased through a number of clothing items so that your max weight can increase significantly over time. As you can see, our maximum weight went from 80 kilograms to 100 kilograms. And now, just similar to the overweight icon, that was the cartoonish dumbbell with a red circle around it. This is now the same dumbbell with an up arrow on it and a continuously decreasing clock. So I hope that anyone who watched this found that these icons were informative and also helped with maybe some of their play style because there are options that you can use to adjust for things that you might not anticipate or might not always come across. There are options like the melee weapon increase that could allow you to dabble into other play styles and into other methods of combating bandits and hunting. All of these lower left icons are also important in unlocking a rarer achievement in that you have to access all of these icons simultaneously, many of which a, a player might not even be aware of. As with some of the potions, there are potions that most players will never even feel a need or urge to get, so getting that icon to get the achievement might be more challenging. Anyway, I hope you found this informative. If you liked it, please like the video. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in another video. Thank you. This has been Seven. Bye.